everybody my name is farmer phil and in today's video we are going plowing it is well into october it's like the 11th or 12th of october just finished up the last tank of slurry with the tankers well, one more job with the pipes but we're going plowing i have the wagon six for a wagon plow on the 3690 and we're going to see how this goes Uncle Ian has gone out and he's just finishing off a bit of plowing with the forefront and then he'll be matching up with me and we'll be seeing how we go. This is a long plow, hope I don't get caught on my mother's fence. No, I think we're okay. You may see the panels are off one side. We dismantled the rads, blew them out and we try to tighten the viscous fan. We thought we had three other viscous fans in the shed all off other 3000s and I think one could be off an 81 series tractor but the viscous fans are all different so I have to go buy myself a viscous fan which is fun because they're not cheap but um, we have it tied or secured or I don't know what way Father Phil done it but he has it done there's a good flow of air going through it now so hopefully fingers crossed we have no more heating issues if we, that's why we left the panels off in case we do just so that we can get it not have to be taking panels off and whatnot. So, as much as I'd love to have the panels on it, we just took them off just in case something else goes wrong. But we should be, we should be good. We're gonna go actually get to give this a good old test out. Just one field of powers, that's all we're gonna get done. But yeah, looking forward to this now. Hopefully all goes to plan. So, we're out here now in the field. And that's where the veneer is going to be lying till um, we figure out what we're doing with it. The rake is waiting to go to the shed, same with the trailer. The field around the gap where we were bringing out muck isn't great, but the rest of the field should be fine. So what I gotta do now is turn my tap here so I can turn the plow. Now I can turn the plow. And we see how this goes. We're gonna start bum headland and plow to the top headland. Reason for that is every year you swap sides. So you never plow the same side twice. Also, I'm gonna be leaving a large headland because someone in the comments when we were on the vintage plowing video or field day we had said that leave a long, a large headland and do a figure of eight to get lined up easy because I was struggling a bit I did do to get lined up so go try that don't know whether my uncle will be impressed with that my father he's happy enough with that I think he'd like that because it means he might actually get to do the spraying without hitting all the ruts of the plow and going across even though we do have a fairly level but I don't think you can ever have that level enough for the sprayer um, just my uncle has always plowed straight into the hedge and a little headland as possible we'll have to see how that works anyways go that way go that way there we go so oh. I think I may have to yeah I think I'm going to have to pressurise the cylinders just remember what all my switches do yeah that changes my cross furrow that's up and down. Yeah, I have to plug in a pipe now to do that. Yeah, go pressurize my um, my my springs. I look a bit weak. Compared to the Caverna land, these are on like a hydraulic cylinder accumulator for a spring rather than an actual metal spring. So I need to plug in this pipe, turn that tap there, and charge up the cylinders to get that to work I'm pretty sure so try this now so I think we're ready now so yeah back into position now the first run Four-wheel drive, here, right, down the front first, down the back first, right to your throttle. Let's see how this goes. button rather than my draft control that's because the draft control 
isn't working as good as I need it to be working. So I'm working off the up and down because I just find it a little bit more precise. That's why I'm doing it. But it seems to be going all right. A little bit sticky. A little bit sticky now, but I think power pretty good here now. Might we just be plowing the middle part, the far in front of the, the wheel. I don't think it's getting enough art. It seems to be leaving a little bit of a hollow in the plowing. But I think that could also be from my wheel track as it's taken it's taken the furrow on my wheel track over. I think that could be some of it now. And it's just because I'm going down into the ground a little bit, that's taking some of the clay away and it's just not not even the right right wheel track. them left and right when you turn it so that has to be taken in consideration that was one of the things I can't remember who commented but someone just said give me them little tips on that video so I'm gonna try that I get into the field a little bit I just don't have the space beside the hedge but yeah this have lined up again now this end of the field I'm in at the minute is our wettest end of the field so as I go that way it should get drier so fingers crossed this is this is always this is the argument for not having a big plow is when ground isn't ideal it's more for us to pull and it's harder to pull I've never actually got stuck plowing before I stuck with the car lots but never plowing and whether plowing trying to plow a big plow like this would just be leave me better, the more likely to get stuck or not, I don't know, but that's one of the arguments against buying a big pile like this, is it's not just as versatile in the wetter conditions, because you have the mix of furrows to try and get pulled through, so we'll try this run now, and I think we'll be down the camera and we'll try and get it done, or all green comes up to me and tells me I'm doing it all wrong. Down the front furrows, down on the flat, try and match it. Also one of the things that's not helping me as well is the bow is isn't bright. So you can see yourself the face sticking to the board so it's not just light and super ground as well. But oh and alright, the only just that fur in front of the, the wagon plow, the wagon plow wheel. It's the only fur I think that's that's not matching that nice. The back fur could be going a bit too deep as well. Maybe. Them two runs now is the same as three runs with the four for a plow. That's one of my arguments for getting the plow like this. Great. Lift up the front for us. Lifting up the back. Lift up the back for us. Not very easy to get it all to match up right. On the 64.99, if I was to put this on it, there's a whole set of datatronic stuff you can do for the hydraulics to try and match that up nice, but. I don't have it on this tractor at all. Man, you have. So, there I go. Put away the camera. I'm going to try and get a couple of runs. Then get me out from the hedge a bit. And we'll see how it goes from there. So, getting on pretty well now. Just through the rear. The, 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 oh, from the veneer to the, to the rear. Absolute. Shit. No two ways about it. Beer steers cars to get turned just with how, how that was going and we're pounding away very nicely at the minute so we are all the furs are matching up pretty well the only, re the only fur that kind of lets me down every now and again is the fur as I said before in front of the wagon wheel that it's down fierce well fierce fierce well just kind of dead in the hang of my headlands and everything 
Colleen is waiting at the top. I don't know whether he's going to come and join me or not. He has, must have the top field done. So I'm tipping away here nicely. Just doing nicely now. Tractor's not giving me any trouble. There's no overheating or anything. So I'm, I'm happy out now. I should have no bother getting this done. And I get bro to come out when I get on to kind of a longer run up that way. I think it's the time to get him out. Maybe a drone pod, but yeah, no, she, she's going away grand there now. So Uncle Ian's just scribing to line us up with that fence and we're not too far off it. So I go out the way and let Uncle Ian plow out that. I go down to the other end of this and plow up to follow that scribe in and match, match in with his. Bro is coming as well there to get the drones so yeah all's coming together nicely. I go down and I'll plow up along that and match in with Uncle Ian's scribe and we'll be, we'll be laughing then. we'll be laughing. Oh, Uncle Ian has joined in now. So, when I get to this other headland, I'm going to swap with him and let him go first. Because I'm more afraid of him running into me than me running into him. He does go like the clappers when he's plowing. Absolute like the clappers. I think I have a stone. Yeah, I do have a stone. So, Uncle Ian is just plowing off the headland up there. And I'm doing the full run. The only issue is it ain't straight. Hopefully, in, uh, maybe you got a bit distracted mark in the scribe, but it, it quite literally goes that way, and then it goes that way. So yeah, there's a banana in the middle of the field, which may or may not suit, as the top hedge is a banana too in the same. It goes that way, and then it goes back that way. I have to wait and see, but I'm flying along here. Flying along. Rose beside me. Wait until Uncle Ian gets finished there to come back and join me in the line to get some top class drone footage. But yeah, we're, we're flying away here. It's getting a little bit hard to match Uncle Ian's fur on one side. I may have to make an adjustment to my check chain again, even at a quite a larger scrape than I am. I'll do that when I get this fur. This, this end of the field is a bit sticky. For a grow, we're spreading down. Lengthen this. Should do the job. Just after hitting this bit of a stone here. It's a lump of sandstone. Oh, that is a big bass of rock, so it is. Don't get the side. That's gonna have to get the, the track and road rock to lift that now.
be able to see. It's starting to get a little bit dark now. So we'll start coming to the end of the field, drop down, it's up the front and off the dip, hit the back and swing it. Do it in the one move and then strip the cow, straighten up, slightly over, keep the full lock on, full lock, full lock, full lock. Can't just see, but if I take this off, Uncle Ian then just slots in, takes off. I keep her pulled tight. Just put this back up here now so I can do my maneuvering. Keep it tight, keep it tight, straighten up. Turn over the cow the rest of the way. Keep going, keep going, then hit the diff. Drop the front fur up. Start dropping the back in. Drop the back in, lift the front fur up. And then find my depth and plow. I'm happy with myself now. I have it, I have it down to pretty good. That maneuver I do there, I get dead straight to it pretty much every time. You have to be on, on board with pushing and pulling all the levers. But well, I can do it, I can make it work. Uh, down in one feet, purely so I can try and keep up with Uncle Ian because he plows at a different speed all together. It's just full chop. No, no hold it back. I normally like to go on it, not put too much pressure on it. But keep up with him to be able to make sure that he's lifted turn by the time I get out there and he's ready to go back in and then I'm ready to follow him back in. That's what you have to do. It's always easy enough on the four furs because <clears throat> I'd always use the one out that he's using and he'd always use the 6480 and the four fur slacker board. And the slacker board plow is always a very slow plow to turn, so you have lots of time. But now I'm on the big plow and I'm just I'm, I'm happy with it. I, have, I think I have it down to a pretty good team. But down the way we're taking 10 furs every time we go up and down the field. So we're flying through. Flying through. The one thing I wouldn't say, I'm a little bit caught for grip or traction. Put them tires I have on it, we've been there way too long, she's nine months ago. I get them on this tractor, this tractor will. Oh, she'll be no bother. She's a little bit better for grip now. The thing I know, especially in the bit stickier ground, or where the dome is on a little bit heavier than maybe it should be. It'll be better for traction, but it's not too bad though. Robert is just starting to arrow out in the double fields there now. They'll be ready for sun tomorrow. We're going to give them one couple of four meter. I'll explain that in the next video. So this is just trying to get the winter a couple of about 40 acres, 50 acres of winter corn in before the weather breaks again because we missed it earlier. We get it this time and then we can kind of sit back for a year then. Yeah, it don't do well when we're finished then. We can sit back and enjoy ourselves for the year. The rest of the year. But anyways, coming to the net, other hand that now, so stop talking. And yeah. Got the real light and good light there is. Also, I don't really want to turn on my front ones because I don't really want to blind um, Uncle from seeing what he's doing. So, it is the next morning up there at, at it was nine o'clock last night and back at it now so i have to the hedge and then there's a good bit short ground at that side because the hedge goes that way and then turns back that way they have the field out there harrowed ready to be sown and they're moving on to the harrow that one and yeah we'll, we'll be that'll be a separate video when i get to that end of the job but yeah i'm gonna go and find there so we will take it over here and we'll knock this bit of power out of it. Down the way, it's just starting to come up. The further up the field we get, the stonier it gets, and along the hedges is quite stony, and there's not a lot of soil. So we're just starting to get into that now. But down the way, Grant, towards you can see yourself. Kind of half bright, but the clay still sticking them. A little bit sticky, but it's drier than it was yesterday. I'm getting on a slightly 
seven or eight I'd say the 3690 will take seven or eight 6499 will anyways but where we could get caught with going with them extra furrow or two is in the ground like this that little bit sticky we may not be able to get enough traction to pull that many furrows through the ground that's where I'm that's where the debate is with me I'd love to just have one big plow one four for a plow that way you have a small plow for doing the small bits doing receiving jobs you have the big plow to make good progress in the tillage ground but that's where i'd like to go get rid of one of the four furs and the five for but that probably won't happen not not for a while anyways but yeah i'm well impressed with it. i think it's the way to go is get a big plow like this but what do you think with going seven or eight furs bigger get more done but will it mean be the difference between not being able to plow that stickier bit of ground that, that for me is the debate pull. Anyways, look, I'm happy with this. I'd like to think that we get one of these sometime. Just it speeds up the job. But anyways, look, I'm gonna leave it at that for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll move on now to getting winter corn in. That'll be the next video and 3690. Later blinder, as always. But anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. That is it for me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Good luck. <laughs>